thank you everyone for joining us today. Today we're going to do a pretty simple session and we are going to learn how to file uh, the Kenyan tax returns. And this is done on the online platform iTax. So as we intend to have this being a practical session, I'm going to ask that you have close by your personal identification number for tax, that is the PIN number. You can get this from your PIN certificate or your P9 form in the event that you're employed and your employer gave this to you. Uh, you could, uh, if you don't have any of these, please go to your registered email address and try search the word KRA. You should be lucky to get something uh, as they use emails to communicate a lot to the taxpayers as being those. So please make ensure you have that. The second thing is you will need to have your password to be able to log in on ITAX. Uh, if you're not able to get the password, then I will teach us also how to reset uh, our pins. So as I get on to set up, I'm going to ask you that you get those tools so we are able to get started. Our aim being that by the end of this webinar, which today we intend to take slightly shorter than normal, uh, we should be able to have filed our returns and avoid either paying consultants to do this for us or getting penalized by KRA for not having filed the returns on time. Uh, do remember that it's an expectation of you, of you as a taxpayer in Kenya to have filed your returns by the 30th of June uh, 2022. And the returns with regards to which we have, will be filing are the returns for the year 2021. So we actually have exactly 21 days before the deadline and we felt it wise that we bring this timely session to you so you are able to comply and also be in good books with KRA. Uh, the penalty for not filing your returns is punitive and uh, we hope that we'll be able to help you avoid that. Uh, that much having been said, I will head straight to the iTax platform to be able to get us that. So please confirm you are able to see my screen. Um, I'm on my browser, so you can use any browser that is of uh, that you prefer using. You will need internet connection as this is done online. So I'm opening a new tab here, and in this new tab, I will simply go in and ta type the words iTax. iTax. Uh, if you use the site a lot, you might probably see the word kra.go.ke besides the word iTax. But if you only type the word iTax there and search. Uh, in your returns, the very first pop-up should be ITAX KRA. That is the one we're going to use to file today. So if you have your PIN details ready, please click on that one. The personal identification number is your identifier status with KRA, and it starts with an A. So it should be A00, a couple numbers in there, then ends with an alphabet. For company PINs, those are the ones that start with P. So it could be P051, something ends with a cup, another letter at the end. But personal identification numbers start with an A, couple numbers in between, then ends with another um, ends with another alphabet. So I've opened my iTax page, and this is what we got. So on this page here, before we get logged in, and as you hopefully try to seek that you get your uh, pin details, I want to just quickly take you through some of the items on this page here. Uh, I know most of us, while uh, we were looking for our PIN numbers, assuming this is at the point you are joining employment or the point where you are seeking to join campus or something, you are asked to bring a PIN certificate. What most of us did, for instance, I remember going to the nearest cyber cafe and asking to get a PIN produced for me. In the event you ever need to create a PIN for an individual, this could be uh, you know, a, a young family member who is yet to have a PIN, because of course you cannot create a PIN for somebody who already has one. What you will need to do is you will come to this area just below the box for entering your PIN number and click on new PIN registration. You'll be guided on the details that are necessary to be able to click that out and be able to process a new PIN. But for us who would wish to file our returns, uh, we would need to come with our personal identification number, the PIN number, and type it in that box up there. 
type it in that box there. So follow it closely. Notice that the immediate two digits after the A are not O, but they are zero. So it's A00, couple of numbers, then ends with a, another alphabetical digit. Please type it in there. Then we shall press continue. We shall press continue. So you type in your number, then you press continue. In the event you, you have a mail or you've written your password somewhere, please notice that you cannot copy and paste the password. You can only copy and paste the pin, but you cannot copy and paste the password. So you will need to just uh, very slowly and carefully type in your password in there. Allow me to deal with those people who have forgotten their passwords. If that is you there, please put in your personal identification number, the pin, then come down here and click on forgot password or unlock account. When you click on forgot password or unlock account, which I'm going to avoid to do for my account because I remember my password, it will ask you to put in, actually let us click, but I will not process. So you will click on forgot uh, or password. Then uh, it will take you to a page where you will need to uh, do a mathematical calculation. You will need to do some mathematical calculation, uh, a box that looks similar to the one we had on our screen, this box here, the security stamp. You will just need to input the resulting, uh, you know, right figure. Then an email would be sent to the email address that is associated with your PIN. This is the primary email that you used while applying for your PIN. So having done that successfully and submitted, proceed to open your email address. You will receive an email from, from KRA that will give you a new PIN. You will need to enter that new PIN and automatically change it by inputting a new PIN that you can now use going forward and then process. Then you will now be able to log in. So that, what, that is what you do if you don't remember your password. You reset it by clicking on forgot password then KRA will process that and send you an email. You open the email that will have a temporary password. It's a one-time one use password. So the moment you enter it, you will have to immediately change your password. And of course, as you change the password, you will be required to repeat the password to just confirm that you've mastered it. Then when that is processed, automatically a new password will be availed to you. So for those of us who can log in or for those of us who have already reset their passwords, you will need to input it there. For my case, my password has already been put there because I've decided to save it. And then you will come and perform the stamp security calculation. So 47 plus four looks like 51. Uh, and of course, on your screen, it will be a different, it will be different numbers because this is randomized. So you will need to do the addition. The good thing is the only, the, the security stamp is usually an addition or, or subtraction. So this is not here to test your mathematical prowess back from school. So we'll proceed to say login. And for this session, I'm going to use my personal account for purposes of illustration up until what is possible. So on this screen for ITAX, we are going to try and focus large, mostly on filing returns and making payments in the event there's an amount to pay. So, and we're going to deal with three different types of individuals today. Number one, we are going to deal with individuals who are filing nil returns. Then number two, we will deal with individuals who are filing employment returns. And three, we will deal with individuals who have other sources of income other than employment. Okay, so those are the three cases we are going to deal with today. And I'm going to start with the easiest, which is filing nil returns. And allow me to indicate that you only get to file nil returns if in that year of income, for now, that is the year 2021, January through December, you did not have any incomes. Not having any incomes means you are not employed and paid on payroll. That means you did not have any business running, uh, which gave you some profit or gave you any returns whatsoever. That is the point you run, you file nil returns. Otherwise, you should proceed and file either employment income or other sources of business. In the event you did any trade or transaction, 
that resulted to you being given a withholding income certificate, then you will not be able to file nil returns. In the event in that year of income 2021 for now, you had any salary processed and the POI returns filed by your respective employer, even if it was for one month or even half a month for that matter, you will not be able to file nil returns. So how then do you proceed to file nil returns? My dear associates, what you will do is you will go to the toggle written returns up in the ribbon in the red area. You will see the word return. You do not press, you just put your cursor on it and the word returns will have a drop down list which you will follow and click on file nil returns. That is the fourth item in the pop-up, file nil returns. You shall click on file nil returns and having clicked on file nil returns, you will come and choose the obligation. For this time, we are filing income tax returns. So you'll click on the drop down under tax obligation, and you will remember to click on income tax resident individual. You are a resident if either you are a Kenyan uh, by birth, that means you are a citizen in the country, or uh, as per tax terms, we say you have a permanent establishment. You are a resident if in, a, in the year of income, you are in the country for at least half the number of days, which is I think about 153 days. Or if in the preceding two years, you are in the country not being a citizen, but you are in the country for at least 122 days, which makes for a quarter of a year. That is how we determine your residence. So for this case, we're going to file income tax for resident, assuming that we are dealing with all residents. So you shall click on income tax residents. Then you will click on next. When you click on next here, you will be requested to put in some details. For starters, the return period from, you'll click in that box and put in the first date of the first month of 2021. In the event you hadn't filed returns for, say, 2019, 2020, you will not be allowed to file the returns for 2021. So you will need to go back to the last year that was the returns were filed for and update up until the year that is current. You also cannot file the returns of 2022 income tax because 2022 is yet to be over. So you will go and put in the date 01 slash 01 slash 2021 then when you click away from that box automatically this file this uh online uh pop-up here will automatically pick and insert the last date of that month we we really need to file the returns of our wives you can see the word wife pin in there but many people prefer that everybody files their own return so you can uh, you have the uh, you can leave that open without putting in anything then you shall proceed to click submit and I want you to notice the pop-up that has been given there. It indicates that as a taxpayer, you can only file nil returns in cases where you entirely had no transactions to declare for that period, which is the year 2021. So are you sure you want to proceed to file? If indeed you are sure there was nothing to declare, please proceed to click OK, which I'm going to also do even as I anticipate, I anticipate a stop error. So click on that. And for my case, it's telling me I'm not able to proceed because I actually have some employment income. I wonder who that is uh, for that return period. In your case, if you actually had no returns for that period, you should be seeing a screen that gives you an acknowledgement receipt that your returns have been filed and you will proceed to click on that small uh, there's a link just below the screen that you are looking at where you can be able to download the, the return. Also, when you check your mails, you'll be able to see an acknowledgement notice provided by the Kenya Revenue Authority. So that was the first, uh, that was the first type of return we were dealing with, and that is those that were, were in, intending to find mail returns, which means they had no salary whatsoever. They had no other businesses running that attracted, say, withholding tax certificates that needed to be declared. Uh, so for me, it gave me an error because I have employment income and I'm not allowed to file nil returns. Notice that as your employer withholds and pays your PAY every month, these details are accumulated and put on your iTax platform. 
So KRA are able to actually track and know the transactions that were conducted. So we will then move to the second set of persons. These are people who are, who are employed and that is the only source of income they have means they do not have any other source of income that could have attracted with the holding tax certificates or any other incomes they would want to declare. So if you're in that category, which I assume most of us should be in, then you will again proceed and put your CASA on the word returns up there. Remember the homepage. I'm just clicking to go back to the homepage. So that is how the homepage looks like. Remember to do returns. I can also come and click on this word e-return, but I find it easier to just find everything I want on the ribbon up there. So put your toggle your cursor on the word returns, then drop down and click ITR for employment income and notice the word only, which then means if you had other businesses, if you, for instance, did some consultancy work that ended at you being have, having some withholding tax, uh, in, withholding income taxes withheld by the person who was paying, or you did some agricultural income or any other activities that earned you some money and you'd wish to declare, then this is still not for you. So what you want to do is come and click on ITR for employment income only. Now, uh, KRA has done a good job in trying to make it easier for you as a taxpayer to file your returns. Uh, if you remember the principles of taxation, among other things should be the ease with which, with which compliance is achieved. So if your employment income is the only source of income, then you actually do not need to download any file or take a lot of time doing this. It's a one minute job to be able to finalize and actually file your employment income returns because you're actually just confirming the details that your employer has been submitting through the year to KRA. So what you do is you put your cast on the word returns and click on ITR for employment income only. It brings us on the page you can actually see. It will have your details. And of course, because it already knows I'm a resident, that is perfect. You will come to the return period from and type the first date of the first month of 2021. If you've not filed any returns for this year, then you, you will most likely have to input that. For my case, when I click in that box, I already find pop-ups because I've actually been filing returns for some people. That is why you can see that when I click on it, I already get pop-ups. So I can just come and click on that. For your case, you will have to go and type it. When you type it, please do not write one slash one. Type zero one slash zero one slash 2021 the date and month must be accompanied by two digits the year must be in the full four digits so it's zero one slash zero one slash 2021 again if it happens that you had not filed your employment returns last last year which were for 2020 yes. or any other previous year you will need to actually go back nice. back date all those years then come uh, you know, successively to the year we are currently on. Uh, we have three questions in the chat box. So allow us to just go quickly and handle our three questions. I suppose the first question I can see here is by Gladys. And yes. Gladys is asking, how can I file new returns for Kenyan citizen who is living outside the country? Are they considered to be residents? Yes, Kenyans, if Kenyan citizens who live outside the country have a permanent uh, residency in Kenya, Assuming something was to happen to them and they are to be deported outside of those countries they reside in, Kenya would be the home of deportation. So they remain residents of Kenya. What you will need to do for them, Gladys, kindly ask them to avail their PIN number. The PIN number starts with an A, a couple numbers in between, and an alphabetical letter at the end. Find out if they have the password. If they don't have, you can reset the password as we indicated at the start of this webinar then you will proceed the very same way that we have. You'll go to returns, then go to file nil returns, and then just click OK. So file nil returns, then at file nil returns, when that loads in a split second like that, you'll proceed to say income tax resident. Then when you click next, you'll be allowed to file the returns, and that will be perfect. I'm going to answer the second question. What happens in the case where you've forgotten the password? and the email you use to open KRA, you no longer use. Much as you no longer use that email address, you can always recover it. Most email addresses have the option for recovery. So if you remember that email address, 
you can go and reactivate it by following the prompts. The good thing is the email addresses usually has a couple of questions and avenues of resetting the email address. So you will actually have to reset the email address, then now use it to reset the PIN. Notice that if you have a copy of a PIN certificate, look at it and somewhere, um, let me let me just show you a copy of the PIN certificate. So if you want to see your PIN certificate, I'll just go to registration and ask this website to, to give me my PIN certificate right here, reprint PIN certificate. So I'll just say that, yes, I want to see that and I'm the taxpayer and I will just say submit. When I click submit like that, I'll be able to click here to download. So yes, download it for me. And when I come here, I'll be able to see my PIN certificate. So when you open your PIN certificate, then the email address that KRA rec recognizes for purposes of uh, communicating to you is in the second line just after your name. So you will somehow have to figure a way of getting to that email address because that is where your password will be mailed to. If somebody has forgotten their password, the only way to get the new password is through that person's password, kindly. If I forget my KRA PIN number or my KRA password to the PIN, the only way to get the new PIN when I reset is using my email address. Even if you are to change so that the email is sent to another email address, I must come to ITAX and log in to be able to ask KRA under registration and amend PIN details to change the email address. But before you do that, you must have logged in, which means you must have gotten to that email address where the dummy password is sent to. So Gladys, the answer is yes. You must some, somehow get to that email address because that is where in the event you had forgotten, you found it. Then Martha is asking what happens if you have totally forgotten the email address. If you have totally forgotten the email address, again, Martha, find your KRA PIN certificate, which I have indicated with mine. In my KRA PIN certificate, the email address is right here. So now having known the email address, now you must figure a way of getting inside the email address because that is where your password will be sent. So allow me to proceed then. So we were here now trying to file the returns of somebody whose only source of income is employment income. And we said, having logged in, you want to come to returns. Then you want to proceed all the way to ITR for employment income only. Click on that. You want to come here and put the first date of the first month of 2021. And I'm mentioning that if you happen to proceed and you hadn't filed returns for 2020, 2019 and backwards, it will prompt you to have to go back and file. Then having put the first and the last date, the last date uh, automatically inserts itself when you put in the first date, you will come and say, do you have employment income? Oh, yes, we do. Go, we are grateful that we have some employment. So you come and say yes. Then you shall click on next. When you click on next, uh, this site here will bring you to this new page where most of those questions you are asked on that Excel file in the event you download them are found. So on this page, section A, you are some areas are prefilled, the name of the taxpayer, the PIN, the period, and the rest. But you have to come to the return information. So return information is right here. So has your employer provided you with a car? You are the one who knows that answer. When you click on the drop down, is a yes or no answer. When you put a yes, it affects how your return progresses going forward because a car is actually considered to be a non-cash benefit. So do you have some mortgage that is supposed to give you a mortgage relief? Do you have life assurance? It's supposed to give you again mortgage, uh, life assurance relief, uh, some tax relief as you proceed to file. Do you have a home ownership savings plan, another relief? Do you earn any income from a foreign country? You will need to declare that because be being a resident, you are bound to declare all your incomes and even internationally. That means away from Kenya. Then section A part two bank details. I will not recommend that you file this for now. You can actually proceed with the other parts of the return without filing this. But I want to warn you that in the event your returns end with a negative, which means you are indicating KRA owes you. The negative amount in the last page indicates that KRA owes you. In the event your returns in the final page has a minus, you will have to fill this. It becomes mandatory if it's a minus. But if it ends as a zero or a positive, then you, you, it's not mandatory for you to fill this. If it ends at a zero, it means you are fair and square. You don't owe KRA, neither does KRA owe you. 
if it ends in a positive, it means you need to pay the positive amount to KRA, which means you may have been undertaxed in that year. And if it's a negative, it means KRA owes you, you are overtaxed and they need to refund you some amount. But in the typical execution of KRA, they will actually not refund, they will request that that amount remains as credit in your account for you to offset in the next uh, filing cycle for the same type of return. Because currently we are filing income tax return, you will need to offset it next year when you're filing the returns for 2022 in the event you now end up with a positive, okay? Now, having filled everything that is necessary there, I will ask you to press section F, but for my case, I'm not going to press section F, I will instead take you to this sheet which has an equivalent of my section F, but I have masked out some areas for purposes of just keeping in the details uh, under wraps. So this is section F. When you click section F and considering you said you are formally employed, you will see the name of your employer down here. If you happen to have had more than one employer in that year of income, then you will have more than one lines like yours truly here. I have more than one lines, which means I had some salary from employer X that has been masked out. Then I have another salary from Datacleave, the team that is training us here today. The, the pin number will be indicated there. Uh, the gross pay will be indicated here. Again, that has been grayed out just for purposes of uh, confidentiality. When I click section F, you will see that I have two lines here. So I have two lines down here, which means that your income, I happen to have had two employment pro, uh, um, uh, salary payrolls run for me. So the first one is listed up there, their PIN number, their name, which has been grayed out, and all other details, the gross pay, uh, the value of car benefit, uh, which if it was there, I can see it's zero, and then the total employment income, as per the details that my employer filed. And then row number two, again, data clave, all the details going all through like that. What happens in the event that the details you have in your P9 form and the details in your ITAX platform are not similar. So what happens is one, you are not allowed to modify the details that appear in your ITAX. You can see the word modify uh, just after the delete option, but if you click on it, it will not take you far. It will request you to speak to your employer to do the amendment. So you are not able to modify this is as per the details that your employer gave. But be very keen with your P9. You could be looking for the, uh, for the total income. So there are two figures that many people often uh, confuse. There's the column for total employment income, then the column for taxable income. Those figures are different. The total employment income and the total taxable income those figures are different and the difference is the value of pension that you get to pay so if you add the taxable income to the total amount of pension that you pay and in the event you have host host home ownership savings plan or in the event you have life insurance then that the difference includes those two so basically the taxable income is the amount of your total employment income subtract uh, all the allowable deductions, such as home ownership savings plan, such as your pension, the total amount that you contributed. Remember that pension is contributed by both yourself and the employer. But for this case, we only consider the amount you contributed and life insurance, if at all. Okay. So please remember that if you already can see your employer details, please do not go and fill up there again. Let us try to see if we can fix it before you fill, because if you go and fill in the employer details there, you will end up in a position where it would seem as if you have two employment incomes, which will put you at a position where you need to pay KRA. And if 30th of June ends without you making that payment, because the process of making, of making the change will take a while, you will be penalized. So please notice that. So let us try and proceed to the end and see if we can fix your issues before you actually attempt to go and modify that figure. But like I mentioned, you can, when you click modify, you will, it will not take you far. It will actually ask you to proceed and speak to your employer to be able to make the adjustments. That is good. So after section F, we go to the next section. So you will either click next here or go and click section M. 
Yes, he did. Can I under the gross pay? Uh, can under the gross pay, yes. Can I then teach the amount that has been indicated to the board in uh, in the areas above? Yes, the gross pay in section A. Uh -huh. uh, What's the difference uh, between your gross pay as per your P9 and as per the the, 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 the difference is about 1,000. About 1,000. Yes. Okay. And, and your sure sure is, is that is the for the yes. yes, because the P9 has been underestimated. Whatever KRA has captured here, it's more. Because I'm thinking at the end of the filing, will this 1,000 have an effect? Yes, it will have a small effect. Assuming, assuming that, that the not captured for the subsequent stages. stages. That is why I'm asking the subsequent stages and see if that is covered for somewhere else as we progress. We want to also see if the amount they filed for uh, PAYE is similar in, for your P, for your P9 or it's also different. Okay, so it could be that there's a misstatement here, but it's covered in the subsequent stages. All right. So for the rest of us. Let's kindly proceed and actually for all of us, proceed and click on M. Oh, there's a question? Yes. Yes, Jennifer. I have a question. Proceed. What if you are dealing with somebody who is yes. newly employed? Who is? Newly employed. Newly this employed means they're yeah. employed in 2022. Not quite. Uh -huh. Like, let's say somebody has been filing named returns. Right. And then they finally decide to start filing, you know, the income tax. You mean will they, they the have the same returns? Will they get access to the same platform you're displaying on the screen? Number they'll have to go through a different process. No, if uh, as long as you had employment income for the year we are filing for, which is 2021, then when you log in and go to returns, you should find the same things down here. The only difference is for you work for that individual's case, they might probably not be having the two lines. They will only have probably one line if they had one employer for that duration. So please ask this person, or if it's yourself, just go to returns. Uh, while logged in, go to returns, then click on uh, ITR for employment income. ITR for employment income. Then after clicking the years, you should be on the same platform. When you click uh, yes, so remember uh, on that page there, you remember to click yes because when you don't, when if you don't click it, if you click no or leave it open, it will not allow you to progress. So you must proceed and click yes for do you have employment returns? Then we will be on the same platform. Uh, that was for section F. So you click next on section F, and when you click next, we go to section M. We go to section M. Again, section M now gives a summary of your PAYE. When you look at your P9, there is a column for PAYE. Okay, so those are the details that come here. Yet again, because all people that are following through are employed, you will see the name of your employer somewhere down there. Again, you are not able and allowed to modify, but you're supposed to basically check the details and compare them with your P9 details. So there is the column for employer name, employer PIN, taxable salary. This is what I was mentioning that the amount that is here for taxable salary is lesser than the amount of gross pay. And the difference is in the pension that you contributed or was deducted, including NSSF. Remember pension is any registered pension scheme plus NSSF which could be 200 or 1080, depending on the organization's policy. Then, uh, so you will look at your P9 and it confirm that the detail that your employer put in there that KRA recognizes is similar to the amount that you have. If there is a difference, you are not able to modify. Again, allow me to repeat that. Then you will also look at the details for, you know, amount deducted, amount uh, of tax payable. Now, the amount of tax payable should actually be the difference of taxable salary and tax uh, over gross salary and taxable pay. So basically it's equivalent to the amount of pension, assuming you do not have any, uh, any life insurance or any home or mortgage schemes. Okay, so again, what we're doing in section M is just confirming your P9 and your ITAX platform. 
then you simply proceed to next and click section Q. So when you click on section Q, it gets us here. And on section Q, there's pretty, there's no much in here. Uh, many people have this whole page blank because this is the details of tax paid in advance, which most people do not get themselves in. But in the event you paid any taxes in advance, then this is your place. So you will need to bring in the payment registration number, a PRN number. This is a number that is generated whenever you make payments to KRA. So you need to go and look for it either in your email or in your iTax platform and be able to put the details. But I'm going to skip this knowing well aware that very few people have this as some detail. Then continue and click next or click on section number T, T for table. And this is the last sheet that now gives us the full detail and how much tax to pay, if at all. Now, remember, since we started filing income returns for employment, you have not input anything. You've just been confirming and clicking next. This is the only part where you actually get to, to put in some details. And two things are required. One, the amount of defined pension contribution. <clears throat> On your P9, there is a column for pension. Uh, just after the benefits, there is a column for pension, and there are actually three columns. There's one column for 30% of your gross salary. Then there's another column for actual. So you will go with the column for actual. So this could be something like 1080 for every month that you work, or 200 for every month if you only pay NSS, if you only pay an SSF at 200. This could be any amount depending on how much pension you pay. So identify in your P9 the amount of pension that you pay. Alternatively, assuming you don't have your P9 somehow, go back to section F and identify the difference, section M rather, and identify the difference between taxable pay and gross salary. Taxable salary and gross salary, that, or, or you can pick the amount in this area here, amount of tax payable, that is the amount you want to put in section T. So you, many a times, the amount of pension suffices, if you have your P9, put in that figure there. So this will be different from person to person, depending on how much you contribute for pension. If you have your P9, makes it easy peasy. Then the other thing you need to file is personal relief. Personal relief for the whole of last year was 2,400 for one month. So if you worked for 12 months, that will be 28,800. If you worked for six months, that will be 2,400 times six. If you worked for two months, that would be, would be 2,400 times two. So looking at your P9, how many months do you have that are salaried? So take 2,400 times that number of months and type it in there. So type 2,400, that was the amount of relief allowed last year, times the number of months that your payroll reads. Most likely, if you have filled those details correctly, the amount of tax due slash refund in the very last cell is zero or negative some few shillings or cents or positive some few shillings or cents. If you have filed in the right amount of pension, if you have filed the right amount of relief, then the, the other cell which you now need to focus on because this is what determines your relationship with KRA going forward is the tax due slash refund. This cell will either have a zero. If it, had, if it has a zero, you are safe. If it has a positive number, it means that is the amount you're supposed to pay KRA. If the positive amount is less than 100 shillings, you are not obligated to make the payment to KRA. It's only an amount above 100 that will be penalized. So if it's negative 10, 20, Bob, you can, uh, you can just skip it until the time when it gets 100, at which point KRA will expect you to make the payment. If it is negative, it means that's the amount KRA owes you. And if it's negative, even with negative 0 0.01, then back in section A, if you remember, the part for bank details, you will have to file it to proceed. In the event, it's negative. So that is how you get to file your returns. If you've confirmed and your figure has come to significantly close to zero, then what you want to do at that point is you want to proceed and press in section T. In section T, what you want to proceed and do, if your figure is a zero, then you are safe, you will press submit. 
and your returns will have been filed. If your result is negative, it means that is the amount KRA owes you. They need to give you back in a refund, upon which if you click submit, you will be requested to go and put in your bank details. And something about the bank details, you do not, you must not, it's not mandatory that it has to be a bank detail. You can actually put your MPESA number, it qualifies as a bank. So in the event, I know some people are cautious with declaring your, their bank details. What you want to do, if that is you, I'm not saying it's, there's a problem putting your bank details, but in the event it makes you uncomfortable and it's a negative, what you want to do is under bank name, you want to come and pick uh, M payment right here, M payment. Then when you click on M payment, we will now change this. So you see now Airtel Money, Elma, M-Pesa and the rest. So I want to assume it's a Safaricom line. So I'll pick M-Pesa. Then city, of city or town, you can just put Nairobi or something, depending on where you are, my dear listeners. Account name, you put in your name or the name whose line you want to put there. Then account number will now qualify as your mobile phone number. So if you are worried about your bank, declaring your bank, M-Pesa, Airtel Money are all around, allowed as alternatives to, you know, including Ucash, Orange Money, and all the rest. So you will then proceed to put your bank, your phone number instead. Oh, Eric Karani is asking maybe a quick recap of filing without a P9. A quick recap, filing without a P9, Eric, you'd go to your ITR for employment income. You'll go to ITR for employment income. Then you will have to put the start date, which is the first day of January last year. Uh, the last day will automatically fill. You will remember to click yes for you have employment income and you will click on yes. When you click on yes, Eric, what will happen is you will come and fill in the details here. Were you given a card? Did you have home ownership savings plan? Do, all of this, you'll put yes or no, depending on how they qualify. Then you will click next. When you click next, it will bring you to section number F. So under section F here, Section F is right here. You will find the name of your employer already down here. And most of the details have already been put there. So the name of the employer, the details, how much you earned in gross, uh, how much benefits were given and the rest. Then you will click next, will take you to section, the next section, M. Section M, you will see the details of POI deducted. Okay, you'll proceed again to click next. So you just do confirmation, you don't put any figures. Then section Q, there's, uh, there's very less to put in. You'll proceed to section T. Section T is the only place you put in figures. The first figure needed is the amount of pension. Because you don't have your P9 and you don't know how much pension, you don't remember how much pension you contributed, you'll go back to section F, okay? And you will pick the amount of uh, taxable salary and subtract that from the gross pay. Gross pay minus taxable salary, if you don't have life assurance or mortgage schemes, gives you the value of uh, the defined pension contribution you contributed. This is the total of NSSF contributions plus any registered pension scheme that you could be, you could be engaged with as a, uh, your employer could have engaged. Then the next thing will come and also put in personal relief. Personal relief is uh, last year was 2,400 for every month of employment. So you will put 2,400 times the number of months that you worked in. 2,400 times the number of months that you worked, and then you'll put that there. And the amount of tax due or refund should be significantly close to zero in a positive or negative fashion. If it's negative, it means that's the amount KRA wanna could die or they should pay you. If it's positive, it means that's the amount you should pay KRA. And if it's zero, that means oh, everything is fair and square. If it's positive and it's less than 100 shillings, then KRA will not expect you to make the payment and they won't penal penalize you for it. But the moment it gets to above 100 shillings, please remember to pay. Also remember that you can actually make mobile payments. So even if it's less than 100, you can actually still be able to process and pay because you can do mobile payments. Eric, that is how you go about filing your personal employment returns, even in the absence of a P9. Uh, Joseph is asking who qualifies as a resident individual. There are three conditions for qualification as a resident individual. Number one, you have a permanent residency in the country. Permanent residency is, uh, we could equate that to you are 
you are born in Kenya, which then means you cannot lose your citizenship. But for tax purposes, it means uh, in the event you are out of the country and anything happens such that the jurisdiction you are in intends to take you back home. You hear cases of people that have been deported. You get deported to your permanent residency, okay? So if you are lost somewhere in you know, South Africa or in the US and something happens to the extent they decide, let's take this person home, they will bring you to Kenya, which then means you have a permanent residence in Kenya, that is one. The second thing is if you, don't, if you do not have permanent residency, but you happened to have been in our country last year because we are filing returns for last year, for at least half the number of years in that year. So that is 365 divided by three. I think that usually comes to about 153 thereabouts. Then you become a resident for that year of income. Or if last year you were in the country for only say 100 days, then we will also want to confirm if last year but one, the total number of days last year but one and last year, do they total 122 days, which is a third of the number of days in a year, then you become a resident. So you, Eric and Joseph, you can just refer to residency status in the country. That is what Janet has just shared there. So 183 days, you will realize is half the number of days or 122 days being uh, a third. Now, that is how you get to file returns for, pers for persons who had only employment income. Leaves us with the one class of people, those who had other classes or other sources of income. You have other sources of income other than employment. This could mean that while you were employed, you had some business running by the side, you had some consultancy running by the side, you had some farming running by the side, which you'd wish to declare to KRA. And while many people might not be willing to declare these amounts, in the event while you were being paid for that good or service, some tax was withheld at the point of payment. So in your email, you have a withholding tax certificate, income tax, not withholding VAT withholding income tax certificate, then you have no option, you have to declare. But in the event you just did your smooth business operations and there was no withholding, then most people might opt not to declare. But as a good citizen, you should actually be able to declare all other returns or all other incomes that you may have earned. So if that is you, then you will not be able to proceed and use the option of ITR for employment income. So in the event you clicked on this, and your ITAX gave you a notification that you cannot file employment returns because you have another source of income, then what you want to do is for your case, while on the returns button, you will need to click on uh, file return, the very first one, file return. So when you go on file return, you will come on the pop on the page that results and click on income tax for resident individual, then you will click next. When you click next, my dear listener, you will need to download an Excel file, which is right here. So you will download the one for Excel, that's the most recommended. So you will click here to download the Excel file, which is a small CSV file. And when you open it, the difference between downloading the Excel file and filing your returns online is for the Excel file, you will actually have to input the details yourself. So it gives you a little bit more work to do, but now that is the only other way if you have other sources of income. So what you will proceed to do, my dear listeners, is you will click enable on that workbook that comes on board and click okay. This is the Excel file that results. So what you want to do here is you want to just come and put in the details, but notice that as opposed to the online file that we were just, or the one was pre-filled, for the Excel file, you actually have to do the filling yourself. So the personal identification number is your PIN number. You already know this from, uh, since you already logged in. So it's A00 blah, blah, with a ending in a, an alphabetical number. Then type of return, you will click and say original. Then uh, tax period, you have to put in the first day to the, of the first month of that year. Then you remember putting a lot of no's on that first page there. So they're already pre-filled for that one, not unless there's one you want to change to yes. Then the most important thing is, uh, do you have income other than salary income? Where is that? Right here, row number seven, this one. Do you have any income other than employment income? For you, you will have to toggle this and say yes. The moment you say yes, you are going to see additional sheets 
populate down here. Currently, we have column A, which was basically in our file was still, was it A? Then we had F, M, Q, and T. Now, in this case, if you come and click yes here, you will have more sheets than what we get there. But before I go there, you will still need to come and fill the employment income details. Now, for this one, you cannot proceed uh, as per the question that I think James or somebody asked how to file without a P9. If you don't have any other sources of income, then now you have to actually get your P9 to fill these details, to be able to fill all these details. So you will come and pick the employer, pin of employer, name, and all these details. Remember all these details in, if you only had employment income, were already pre-filled. But here you actually have to do the donkey work and fill this out. But because I've already indicated what goes where in these sheets, I will only go to the one where you have employ any other income apart from employment. So I'm going to click yes, and notice the number of some sheets are going to populate down here. So it needs me to first put a date, uh, but nonetheless, it's given me the sheets I'm looking for. So the important of these sheets are these two, sheet number B and sheet number C. Sheet number B is about the profit and loss. So when you open the profit and loss, it has you know, the columns of business. So that other source of income other than salary, was it business income? Was it farming income, rental, interest income? If you had some you know, savings uh, with some financial institutions or thereabouts, was it commission paid for doing some activity or any other source of income? So you will come and put the amount. Do you consider it gross turnover from trading or manufacture, or do you consider it profession or consultancy fee? So you choose. So you want to make sure you pick the right column to use. So if you're going to use business income, then make sure or even your expenses fall in the business line of income. So you put in the amount of revenue earned and then just follow it through. There's a long list of expenses that uh, results down there. So you can see rent and power, fuel, uh, other incomes if in, in the event they are there. Uh, so for this, you might need to sort of be good with a little bit of accountancy and being able to create uh, the profit and loss account to be able to just feed. But essentially you just come and bring in all the expenses that you incurred in earning that revenue. Okay, then having done that, having done that, you will proceed and the other important sheet is the balance sheet. The balance sheet is also important, but now because most of us, I imagine are not accountants, the only thing you want to do is the balance sheet always has to balance, hence the word balance sheet, yes? So you want to make sure that you pick something in the, in the assets category and another another item in the liability category. So what you can usually do to just uh, make sure you pass this stage, you can always come and for instance, put some amount and uh, let me just show you that. You can just come on this sheet and put some amount under cash at hand or cash at bank. So that should be in under current assets. So down here, you can just come and put in an amount say under uh, not prepayments, but under bank balance, you can just come and put in an amount and a bank balance. So you say a thousand or a hundred or 10,000, whatever you decide to put. But basically the total of the assets area should equal the totals of the liability areas. The liability area starts in uh, row number 47. So assuming I'd put a thousand and a cash at bank, I'll come and say, for instance, uh, my creditors or the amount that I contributed as the owner of the business what we usually call proprietor's capital or loans. Basically anything, you just want to put another, you to pick any column under the liabilities and equities area and put in the same amount. Or if you had numerous areas for accountants who are able to juggle the balance sheet, just make sure that the amount for total liability and the amount for total assets balance. Otherwise you will not be able to proceed. Having done that, you'll proceed and fill in the employment details as we have already discussed. And then in the very last sheet, in the very last sheet, which is tax deal, tax computation is the same sheet we were dealing with in that last file we were putting the pension. So you see, we, only, we again have defined pension. You will put in that amount we discussed back then. Then you will come to the relief is right here, 2,400 times the number of months you worked in that year of income. But here you now have the addition because you indicated you have other sources of income. If at all income was withheld from you while working, you want to go to your email address and bring out all the withholding tax certificates, aggregate their total and put that amount here. 
Now that will depend on the value of the transaction you did. So I cannot advise how much that will be. You will have to go to your PINA, to your email and pull it out. The inconvenience is if that amount is different, even by cents, when you try to upload this file, it will reject and you will have to come back and put the right amounts. Uh, in the event you have challenges with that, feel free to reach out to us. We are able to assist you complete filing those returns. Then you will need to proceed because you, you indicated other sources of income. Probably you have some commercial proposals for which you usually pay advanced tax. You want to come and put it in there in the event you have. If you don't leave it at zero, then lastly, any credits. In the event last year, you were at a negative position, you now need to come and put that negative position here to help you reduce the amount of tax you get to pay here. But for those people filing using this file, in the event that your income statement back there did, did not balance at zero, then you will definitely have a positive figure here, which then means that's the amount of tax you need to process to KRA. What you want to do for the dear listeners, you want to click on validate. Uh, when you click on validate, it will take some time to process while, while this Excel file is checked for compliance and just making sure all the files that need to be filed have been checked in. And it will process and put it in your uh, documents folder. If there, uh, a pop-up will come that indicates it's been validated and the documents have been, have been uh, uploaded. So you'll go back now to your iTax. And because you are downloaded and you filled, you'll now come to this area, automatically it picks the year. You will click choose file. Then you will go to your documents folder, uh, documents folder. Then you will see this kind of files, the zip files here. It's usually a zip file. So you will go and pick the zip file that has the date that you're using to file the return. So if I, if I had done that now, I will look for a zip file that indicates sixth of uh, the ninth day of, of uh, June 2022. And then the last of that folder, it has a PIN number. The PIN number is relevant for people like me that tend to file returns for more than one person. So you will confirm the PIN number. And lastly, you will also confirm the last digits, ITR standing for income tax returns, because even VAT when it's filed, it has the same file format, but it indicates now VAT as you can see here. So you'll be very keen to pick the right one. If you happen to validate, it rejects and you have to validate a second time, both files will be here. So you make sure you are able to pick the one that has the right date and even the latest timing. This, the digits in here stand for time. So this was filed uh, on the third day of June 22. And this was around 5.47, uh, the 00 seconds. So you'll click on it and then open. When you open, that file will be loaded here. Then you will click, I agree to the terms and conditions. Then you will click submit, but I'm going to desist filing, uh, clicking submit because the return that I've selected does not belong to this account. So I will click submit. Actually, if I decide to click submit, it will reject because while my pin is this one here, the return I'm trying to put in is not for that pin. So it's definitely going to reject that. I will click submit. And then if everything checks off well, your return will have been filed. In the event you ended up with a positive figure and you want to proceed to, to now make the payment to carry because filing returns is one thing, making payment for the file return is another thing. So if you have a positive figure, it means you need to pay that amount to carry. If in the event you had that positive figure and you are ready to make the payment, which also should be done by 30th of June, 2022 for last year's returns, you will come and click on payments and then click on payment registration. Click on payment registration. Then you will proceed to say next on the pre-filled page and say, yes, I want to proceed. Then you now have to tell them, okay, you want to make payments for which return? I want to make a payment for some income tax that I have declared. As I click on this area, Kerry in the background is trying to find out if there's any pending payment that I'm yet to do. So when I click on income tax resident, for my case, I expect it's going to reject because I don't have any payment due. So when I say self-assessment, you can see the pop-up there. There's no liability details that have been found for the selected tax. But in the event you had proceeded and actually had a positive figure, even if it's one shilling, it will be able to be picked. Then up, you will see the details down here that indicates the amount of payment. You will put a tick inside it, then proceed to pick on the mode of payment you want to make. 
if you want to make payment by mobile phone, you'll click other payments and proceed to be able to make returns. In the event you, at the point where you had just finished filing your returns, if it has a positive value, on that pop-up screen that comes, the, uh, there's usually a pop-up that also indicates, do you want to proceed to make payment? You can also just click on that to automatically proceed to make the payment via M-Pesa or any other means that you would prefer to use. That is the match I wanted us to deal with today. I can see Matilda was asking, how do you file for VAT for a business that wasn't active alongside PAY? Does one have to file out, fill out the balance sheet? Matilda, you cannot file VAT and PAY in one move. You will have to go and file PAY on itself. If I get it right that the business wasn't active, it means you, may, you need to file nil returns. You will go to returns, uh, file nil returns. But now because this is a personal ITAX account, you will not see VAT. But now that you're discussing VAT, it means you are discussing something about your business. Yes. So this the pin here will be P0 something something. So click on this drop down. You will see VAT. Proceed to file nil returns for all the years that have not been filed. Repeat the same thing for POI. Thanks, Matilda. Joseph is asking, is the term withholding tax used to refer to taxes from other sources of income? No, uh, withholding tax is a, a regime that was introduced by KRA for purposes of being able to communicate in advance any payments made. So in the event that, let's say, Joseph, you had uh, done some consultancy with DataClave, at the point we are paying your dues, we will pay you less uh, 5% of the amount we were to pay you net. Then that 5%, we will send it to KRA just to tell them that by the way, we've done some transaction with Joseph and this is 5% of the amount we've paid her. So that by the time Joseph is now filing his returns, even if he may have the urge not to, to declare that return, KRA already knows, okay? And it is not for all transactions that tax will be withheld, okay? Then we have two types of withholding. We have withholding VAT and withholding income tax. For this filing, which was for income taxes, you'll only be focusing on withholding income taxes. To answer your question, the term withholding tax is not necessarily used to refer to other sources of income. It is a, a countermeasure regime that care introduced for purposes of knowing very well that, of course, most citizens would not wish to declare some other forms of incomes. So that is a way in which the businesses you are trading with get to, in advance, report to KRA that there's a transaction. And in that case, you are not able to proceed without declaring. Then Gladys is asking, how do I pay the 2,000 shilling penalty for every year not filed for the nil return? So Gladys has come to the acceptance that she did not file returns and she's ready to pay KRA their dues. So Gladys, what you want to do uh, but as you proceed, I'll also tell you that you can actually file for a waiver. So when you come to debt and enforcement, you can request for a waiver for the penalties and interest. But I can tell you that you must have a very good reason if KRA are to, are to give you a waiver on your penalties. But now that you are ready to pay, you'll come to payments and make a payment registration. Okay, then click next, click next. And now here while clicking tax head, so it's, to, it's the 2000 for not making uh, annual income taxes, so I'll say income tax, and then under tax subhead, I'll say income tax resident. Income tax resident, good. Then under payment type, now you will pick, uh, it's not a penalty, it's not a, a self-assessment. Self-assessment means I'm the one who's filing and I've arrived at this amount. You will now pick additional assessment or penalty. When you click on penalty, now KRA will give you, will load for you all the penalties that appear in your account that have not been filed before. So you will see a list of all the penalties that appear in your statement. You will put a tick inside each of the ones you're willing to pay, then proceed to process by click submitting. You will get a payment uh, registration, you will get a PRN notice, which then you will proceed again under payments and now click to say, make the payment. So that is what you get to do, how you get to file that return, uh, dear Gladys. So I think uh, in the next four minutes before five hits on the dot, 
I'll want to pass this regard. Thank you, thank you. Gladys indicates she's been assisted. So I want to pass this back to Janet, our moderator of the day, to just uh, see if there are any other engagements and uh, give us any closing remarks as we finish. Please note that for those of us who have missed this, we this session has been recorded. It will be edited and uploaded on our YouTube channel uh, for you to be able to use going forward as uh, alongside all other sessions we've had to do in previous times. Thank you so much for listening.